It's mailbag time here on Chicago Bears Now. I'm your host, Harrison Graham, and uh, we will get to all of your questions, or at least as many as we can. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash bears now, so we can pump out more videos. Gino Gamino, not happy about the head coach hire, wanted an offensive-minded head coach for stability. So what about Mike Kafka's QB coach or OC, Young and Kansas City Connected? So... Kafka wouldn't come as the QB coach because that's his job in Kansas City. He would have to give him a promotion, which could happen. Offensive coordinator, I, I think he is a candidate uh, to be this team's OC. Uh, obviously, Ryan Poles is familiar with him, uh, so I think that is definitely a possibility. Um, so it, we'll monitor that. Uh, I don't – not happy about head coach. You know, let's see how it plays out. I, I, Eberflus is qualified. Now, maybe you don't love the fit because you thought they should have gone offense, but we thought that in 2017, and Matt Nagy never got the offense figured out. So maybe this ends up being better. Julian Gallardo heard the Bears are looking at Philly passing coordinator for offensive coordinator. Yeah, Ian Rappaport reported after uh, Eberflus got the gig uh, that uh, Kevin Petullo uh, is a potential candidate to be this team's OC. He's currently the pass game coordinator in Philadelphia. Uh, he, that, that was his gig last year. And him and Eberflus overlapped from 2018 to 2020. So I think there's a possible um, – relationship uh, upon us between these two, uh, Petulo and the Bears. Uh, so we will keep an eye on that. And obviously, uh, once the Bears hire an OC, we will have a video for that as well. Uh, Mac, why did I not get a notification from Twitter or you? Uh, I tweeted out we're going live, and YouTube should have sent you a notification. If not, you don't have notifications turned on. So I encourage you guys uh, to do that. Once you subscribe, you hit that notification bell, boom, you'll get notified uh, when we go live. But I 100% sent a tweet out, so I don't know what to tell you. Bear Forever 14, Episode 1, The Phantom Matt Ryan Episode 2, Attack of the Matt Ryan's Episode 3, Revenge of the Matt Ryan. So obviously the humor here is that Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy were fired, so why not hire Ryan Poles as GM and Matt Eberflus as head coach? Uh, it's obviously coincidental, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty darn funny. So, you know, hey, hopefully this Ryan and this uh, Matt are better than the last pairing. Confidence level in the Bears with Matt Eberflus. Scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you think this is a joke of a hire, 10 being you're incredibly confident. This guy is going to be running the NFC North. Let us know in the comments. I'll go like six right now. Um, I, I'm cautiously optimistic, um, but let's see what kind of staff he brings in. Uh, and uh, if he brings in a staff I like, that number could go up. Vortex 1988, if there were already finalists determined, is this really a Pulse hiring decision? So I keep trying to clear this up. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, during the interview process of Ryan Poles, these are coaches he mentioned as well. It's not like the Bears are like, hey, these are the three guys we like. These are the ones you have to pick from. He also liked these guys. Now, there might have been some collaboration in terms of like, hey, who are coaches you like? Who are coaches I like? And maybe it was the Bears liked eight guys and Poles like six guys, and these were the only three that overlapped. But either way, those are guys Poles signed off on. Plus, uh, Ryan Poles was allowed to interview more candidates if he wanted to. He didn't. He chose Eberflus. So he, he, he made this hire. Like, I know it's hard to believe, and – Maybe some bombshell report will come out that that's not actually true, but everything that's been reported indicates just that. So I think we have to trust that. I think we have to believe uh, that Ryan Poles is running the show here, and uh, everything indicates that, guys. It really, really does. Angel Carter, we tried an offensive QB guru, and that didn't work out, so who knows? Maybe a DC as head coach can be a good culture change for the Bears. Exactly, and uh, you know that's not a, a guarantee, of course. And since uh, Angel sent in a ten dollars super chat, I'll take a shot here. But uh, I think it's you know we have to give every hire a chance. Like very rarely when a coach gets hired, are you like, oh, this has no chance? That's not Eberflus. Like like Dave Coley in Houston, we were all like, what the hell is this? But this th this is not that. I I can promise you. Br wow. Brandon Watts, could this be a one-year hire hoping they have a shot at Sean Payton? W why would Eberflus take the job then? Now, I guess <laughs> deep, dark conspiracy theory behind closed doors. We love Sean Payton. Let's just hire a guy we don't really like and not tell him. Like, Eberflus is probably agreeing to a five-year contract. So you would that'd be a lot of money you're going to have to pay just to sneakily fire him and hire Sean Payton. I just – I don't see it, guys. Like, it's not – that's not what this is. They believe in Eberflus, and at minimum, he's probably going to get three years. 
Bear Forever 14, collaborate. You wash your mouth right now, mister. <laughs> collaborate means like, just in terms of like, they had discussions about coaching candidates. Polls made the decision, okay? I, I, I can only say that so many times. This is not 2015 where Ryan Pace gets the job and they're like, hey, Todd Bowles is in the building. Uh, we like him. Uh, and then John Fox gets fired. Go hire him. That, that's not what happened here. That is not what happened here. Joe2910, Vic Fangio for DC or no? Uh, I'd be down. Now, I wonder if Fangio becomes less likely since you hired a defensive coach, but maybe Eberflus wants to be the CEO type and just, uh, you know, delegate. Be like, hey, like, I'm the head coach. I'll have some input on the defense, but I'm going to hire a defense coordinator to run the defense. I'm going to hire an offense coordinator to run the offense. We'll hire position coaches, and I'm going to trust my coaches uh, to do their job. I don't think Matt Nagy was good at that. I don't think he uh, he trusted his assistants, especially after he lost uh, Fangio. You know, he goes high and hires a guy like Bill Lazor because he knows that he can make that hire and justify keep calling the plays for a while. He eventually gave it up. Uh, but uh, I think a head coach needs to be willing to trust his assistants. He has to trust his assistants. If not, what's the point? Like, literally, what is the point? Subscribe to the channel, non-stop Chicago Bears news, rumors, and more coverage all year long. It's 100% free. That's the best part. We don't charge you guys because we are a company of the people. So join the movement. Uh, get on board. Even if you're upset, still watch our videos because, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can complain if you want to. Uh, you guys can complain together or you guys can uh, interact together on a positive note. Hit that subscribe button. It's free, and we'll continue to pump out daily videos around the Chicago Bears. Alex Amberling with the $5. Uh, cheers. I kind of understand not going offensive-minded based on how Nagy flamed out. As long as we get a good OC, I'm fine with it. Exactly. And look, you could get a good OC. It could work, and that guy could leave. But I do want to emphasize this as well as I take a sip. If Justin Fields is the real deal, he should emerge. He should. Now... I think the Nagy's offensive staff was so bad that you had to get him out of there, and not many guys could have emerged out of that. But if Fields is the truth, he should be able to handle different offensive coordinators. So makes it a little trickier, but, you know, you have to trust the process. Bear forever again. Are we expecting a presser from Ryan Mapp? Uh, I would assume so, depending on when you're watching this mailbag. We're obviously filming this live after the Matt Eberflus hiring, but... Say you're watching this on Saturday. Uh, hopefully there's a uh, press conference date. Maybe Monday? I doubt they're going to get this together by Friday, but uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will see what happens on that front. Louis DePhillips, what kind of offense does Caldwell run if he's here? I don't know, like, the textbook of it, but uh, just thinking back to the, um, the um, Peyton Manning days uh, in Indianapolis, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun – downfield passing attack, spread things out. They believe in running. He believes in running the football as well. Uh, so I think that would translate. Um, whoever you hire as OC, you got you to gotta tweak your offense to Justin Fields. That's something Matt Nagy sucked at. He did not adjust to the personnel he had. He tried to make Mitch Trubisky a pocket quarterback after year one. That, that was stupid. <laughs> like Mitch Trubisky can't read defenses that well. So you got to get him on the move and uh, make the reads easier. So... Um, whoever comes in uh, has to run an offense that uh, uh, can maximize Justin Fields. Grady O'Connor, very high, excited about this hire. I think Eberflus will be a good game manager and allow the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator to do their jobs. No more gurus to break my heart. And that's fair. You know, maybe just a hardcore football coach is what this team needs. And that's kind of what it seems like Eberflus is. He's a teacher at heart. Um, everything I read, it's like, that's the word you see. He's a teacher. And like, you know... That sounds cliche, but, like, that's what coaches at their core should be, teachers. So um, maybe that's uh, exactly what this team needs right now. Alex Amerling with the $5. Uh, Bears fans are always going to be negative. Exactly, right? Like, I think even if Harbaugh got hired, some guys would have been like, hey, he's not the same anymore. Um, that's just – that's that's the beauty and the curse of uh, doing this job for me is that – you know, I get to see the passion on both sides, right? And, and I love it. That's why I love my job. That's why I love doing this channel. That's why um, when you guys subscribe, um, you know, it's uh, it, it's adding to the family here at Bears now because uh, I love the passion, both positive and negative. I would prefer more positive, but uh, 
hey, I understand the negativity. The Bears have been bad for a while, so uh, at least relatively bad. Uh, not as bad as certain franchises. Who will be the Bears, or what will be the Bears' record in 2022? And that's the thing. That's the beauty of all this. If Aaron Rodgers leaves, which, by the way, Nathaniel Hackett got the Broncos job, maybe he gets Rodgers to go with him, Packers OC, um, the NFC North can be taken next year if Rodgers is gone. Really, it can. Like, you, you get a good staff in here, get a couple pieces uh, to fill roster holes. Like, there's no reason why this team can't win 10 games, which might win the division next year if Aaron Rodgers isn't in it. Jesse Cazada, can this game and co GM and coach bring some big names in free agency? So the Bears, I think, are 11th in cap space, 10th or 11th. That's pretty good. Um, they should ha uh, be able to be aggressive. with 40. Uh, they have about $45 million in projected cap. Um, that allows you to get a couple of really good players. You get a couple of really good players. You get, you know, another 8 to 10, you know, roster filler guys that can play that role. You got your draft coming in. Boom, there's your 53. I think that's the approach. Tr maybe you try to get a big-time receiver, big-time O-lineman. Maybe Teron Armstead is that guy. Maybe uh, Chris Godwin or Adams is the other one. That eats up a lot of your cap space. You, nego you, you know, uh, move some money around, uh, whether you cut a couple players or uh, restructure, create an extra 5 to $10 million, fill out the rest of your roster. Let's do it, man. Like, I, I think this, that Ryan Poles will be aggressive in free agency. That guy, 10 bucks. Uh, owe you guys another shot. Defensive coaches help balance the team, in my opinion. It gives Justin insight he doesn't get from an offensive head coach. Just need the right OC. Exactly, and sure, like, the right OC, that's another piece of the puzzle. Like, you've got to get that right. But I agree with that. Brandon Staley, I think, is going to be great with the Chargers. So maybe Eberflus is like that. Jonathan Castro, can you do a video on ideal OC candidates? Yeah, depending on when you're watching this, I may have already done it. But if you're watching live on Thursday, that's I'll, I'll give it a 90% chance that's going to be the Friday video. So uh, subscribe, turn on notifications, uh, I'll tweet updates, and uh, uh, stay tuned because a lot of videos to come. Top shot of 15, I'm willing to give it a chance. Don't know him, though. Uh, let's talk about his background a little bit here. Um, he was the Cowboys linebackers coach for about six years, seven years. Gets the Colts DC gig in 2018. And we're here in Dallas, and I was here at the time they lost to Eberflus. That was a big blow to Dallas. Like, that, they were upset by that. Uh, a lot of the fans loved him. That staff loved him. He was great in Dallas as the linebackers coach and their passing game defensive guy. Like, that's that, that he had really, really impressed that team. Uh, he gets the Colts DC gig, and he turns a franchise that's been offensive forever with Peyton Manning uh, on to Andrew Luck, and he makes him a top 10 type of defense in the NFL. Like, Matt Eberflus is a good football coach. Now, he's a defensive guy. He's not a flashy guy. But you don't always need flash. Maybe you need a guy that's going to put his head down and just go to work. And that's that's the vibe I get from Matt Eberflus. He's a lunch pail guy. Um, he's, he's worked his way up. He's waited for this opportunity. He's been a hot name for a couple of years. And now he gets his chance. Now he gets his chance uh, to lead the Bears organization into their next era of football. You know, the more I think about it, the more I'm liking this hire. Uh... Doesn't mean it's a home run. Doesn't mean it's going to work. That's true with any coach. Like, very few hires are going to be a home run. So, we'll see. Uh, well, time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, subscribe. Don't miss any of our coverage here at Bears Now. It's YouTube.com slash Bears Now. Uh, more coverage to come. Offensive coordinator candidates uh, uh, should be on the channel. So, check that out. Subscribe, and we will continue to keep you guys up to date.